Chris came onto my radar screen probably about, I think, four or five years ago. We were working on some of the same clients. And, and I'm really excited, like I said, to have you on. So with that, you know, just say a little about yourself, who you are for people that don't know you, and we'll go from there. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Ryan. So yep. Chris Dreyer, been doing digital marketing for 16 plus years. We work with about 130-ish firms currently. 110 are probably personal injury law firms, some of the largest in the country, certainly some of the biggest in their state. And I host the Personal Injury Mastermind podcast. So deep in the search engine marketing game, and that's how we've come across each other. Yes. I'm really excited to have you know Chris on the call today because I feel like you always are trying to stay ahead of the curve. What right now do you see as being some of the top trends out there for just digital marketing in general? I mean, you know, let it not just search engine optimization, but just in general. Geez, that's a big, <laughs> big question. I would say that. In general, Google ads are emerging more as a premier channel than it had been in the past. So from the search engine perspective, greater emphasis on reviews. I think that there is a lot of opportunity in paid social. I would say that to reach their younger audience is probably on the paid social side. But you know, there's a lot of uh, emerging things if we're talking about AI, images, mid journey, there's a lot of deep fakes, there's transcriptions, data and analytics. So definitely a lot on this side of the coin, we can go any direction you want. And there's always change in all these platforms. Like for example, GBP is going to be getting rid of chat. I think that Google is trying to get everything to go from Google business profile over to local service ads. They're taking away features from the Google business profile platform and they're keeping them on the local service ads platform, you know, or enhancing them. You can actually send a message lead to up to four different businesses, you know? Yeah, that's... It's absolutely insane. Would you like to send it to these other four firms? There's a question mark around how Google's going to combat spam, fake reviews, fake offices. Local services ads has an additional layer of credibility through that verification process. So that could be one step in that direction. I listened to your podcast. I mean, you get some really good people on. And, you know, I know you're at the tip of the spear for AI. As you know, response rate is a big part of the local service ad game. And not just for voice, but for messages. So what are your thoughts on leveraging artificial intelligence, not only for local service ads leads, but for, for all leads in general? There's so much here, right? The AI can be used as a filter for speed. It can be used, you know, for a, a time-saving perspective. You look at like the traditional chats in the legal space, like your Apex and Engage that has those automated humans and the costs associated, even if they're doing nearshoring you know, compared to generative or logic-based AI, where they're always running. You don't have to have an agent. It allows you to capture the entire 24-7, where every single call gets automated, automatically answered. And you know as well as I do, I mean, substantially more than I do, the data behind it, on if you miss a call in some of these platforms, just how detrimental it will be. So posting on GMB or, you know, GMB or now it's Google Business Profile, updates does nothing. So, you know, the, the posting feature that you were referring to. Hopefully GBP gets rid of the stupid Google posts. They're terrible. There's no visibility there. It's just a big waste of time. They'll say it as a ranking impact. I mean, minuscule, you know, it's more reviews, your category optimization, how you can deploy relevancy from a content perspective. But, you know, I think it's a, a large waste of time overall. Although if you're on the agency side like me, and when your client gets one of those notifications that their GBP is no longer showing, you know, th there's an education perspective there that goes into that. <laughs> so you got to be cognizant <laughs> of that too. It can be a shocker when, you know, the, the GBP goes down and, and then also the local service ads, it can be a, a, a big shocker because all of a sudden there's like, you know, no mm -hmm. lead volume. You probably get some of those emergency calls <laughs> oh, yeah. every once in a while. I had one, you know, for the 4th of July, I had some competitor change one of our clients' primary category from personal injury attorney to law firm, a public edit stuck. And so the individual lost some visibility. As an agency owner, it's like, okay, well, I've got to take accountability for that. Like, even though we work nine to five, I got to cover, you know, the after hours for, for things like this. And it, it just is what it is. Wow. And so for all you guys listening out there, it's important that you hear what he just said. 
because your competitors can make edits, suggested edits. I still can't believe that Google allows that. And like, it's just, I don't know, they're not known for their customer service. And so it is important to have somebody monitoring and, and we're realizing even as agency owners, that it's even 24 seven, it's, it's crazy. And this is, this is where we can use AI. If someone can create some external tech that discards public edits, I would be all about it. We'd have it on all profiles. Yeah. <laughs> we have our hands full right now with the AI that we're building because you know, the response rate is important. Do you think response rate is a factor in GBP? I do. In GBP as as well. I mean, absolutely for local services ads. There's a, a real correlation between how often you're logged into GBP and manage the profile versus not. I think it legitimizes the profile. We would find yeah. that firms that were consistently adding an image every day ranked better, but was it the image or was it the fact that we logged into their GPP to make an optimization every day? I don't really know. Yeah, right. And, and that goes along with like, you know, using Google Analytics, using all the tools that Google gives you. I always like to say, if basically, if we give Google what it wants, then we get what we want. What about like YouTube ads? What are you thinking about YouTube ads right now? I love I love YouTube ads. If you go to, to rankings, you'll see one of our videos as, you know, close to 100,000 views. We're pumping the ads. You know, we're talking top of funnel awareness. I think it's a great channel. I Even though you can still add keywords and different audiences and things like that, I don't know that it functions the best from a, a middle or bottom of the funnel, but I think from a top of funnel perspective, phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, you're already doing your podcast. Are you doing anything else? What else What else are you doing for, for content for yourself? I host a weekly show and then we're, we're doing the conference, right? I, I have a book that's launching my second book in September and I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. I've got a team behind me that's helping me with everything. We're hitting pretty much every channel besides traditional, to be honest. What are your most successful channels for yourself? Just curious. Like, I mean, or you find it, is it the trade shows? Is it LinkedIn? Is it YouTube? Is it po podcast? Have you guys, do you guys track that? Yeah, we do. So, you know, I'll say on the marketing side, search Google ads, we're committing anywhere from 80 to hundred grand a month ourselves on Google ads. We do a decent amount on paid social. We actually have ads running right now, Ryan, on every yeah. single main social channel, Twitter wow. slash X. We have TikTok ads. We've got YouTube ads, we've got LinkedIn ads, Facebook, Instagram, of course. So we're running those heavily. We've got some programmatic stuff going as well. And then for our size, I think we got a pretty big sales team. We got around 12 people. So yeah, kind of doing it all though. Wow. And, and I know that you guys have like regular meetings yearly, the mission, vision, value type thing, or mission, vision, core values. How important are those meetings, you think, for, for, the, for your company? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the bigger you get, the more coordination and communication challenges there are. So, yeah. especially with a remote company in the beginning, you know, when you're a seven person shop, you know, you can have one meeting and everyone's all aligned. But when you have multiple silos, multiple departments, it's just communication becomes more challenging. Yeah, I agree. And that's my point is that you guys, you get together in person. I think that there's a little bit counterculture, like my sales team, I'm having them send like loom videos that show that it's actually them. You know, like something below them on a whiteboard that says, you know, hey, Jim, or, you know, Chris. And then it, it increases the click-through rate because it shows up in their text with that, that, that GIF in the beginning. And it's, it's human. They know it's not automated. Speaking of automation, I use a combination of Google Gemini, ChatGPT. Which one do you prefer out of those? <laughs> I use ChatGPT a lot, especially for research. It, it just cuts down the time. So for some people, ChatGPT is kind of like a new search engine. So how do you build for that, for the business that's out there? You know, because what we've been doing is we'll create content all the time about our clients. And then ChatGPT has more reference for that business. And so the more that there's content created around a business, the more reference points there are. And the more chance there is that ChatGPT is going to have an understanding of that business. Right. Yeah. That schema, that entity SEO in a nutshell, we have always historically emphasized starting with the top of the funnel, you know, top of funnel content for awareness. And it's taking a reverse approach and really starting at the bottom of the funnel. So those practice area pages, those sales pages, depending upon what industry you're in. And then when you're targeting the top of funnel content, it has to be truly unique. If it's, if it's been written about 10,000 times and you don't have any added value to that subject, then you probably shouldn't do it. But let me speak to my space. You know, I'm in legal. 
And the Department yeah. of Transportation is always two to three years behind on their data. If you go get their data and use AI to clean it up and create the article on accident statistics and you are the source, then that's a good approach to top of funnel content. And you know, the saying goes is by the nature of being different, you automatically stand out. Yeah, I agree. Create unique content, leverage whatever platform you want to create that content. Um, look for niches where it's not well organized, like you're saying, or where you can add value to it because of your unique perspective on it and leverage these tools as a multiplier. I've tested Neuron Rider, Phrase, Surfer, Jasper, you name it, I've tested it. Those are not standalone tools. They can enhance your abilities from an ideation perspective, a research perspective, but they're not standalone. So outside of that, what else do you see as a, as a business owner? You know, reviews are really important, obviously, even verified reviews. But as you know, it's tougher to get them to go live a lot of times, you know, those verified reviews. I think it's an additional hurdle. I think they're more trustworthy. Look, yep. the review scenario in, in the SEO space in some of these competitive industries, it is very toxic. There's so many fake reviews. You're not saying businesses pay for reviews. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's all over the place. It's just crazy, right? Paying for reviews, it's individual profiles that are created, you know, that are new, that are multiple locations. It's, you know, one of the things that we do, we call it competitor takedown. It's like competitors that are violating terms of service, whether it's a fake office, a fake review. It's like, we have to do that because if I need 10 more reviews to be the, the most reviewed firm, it's like, well, I could do that, but I could also, you know, nuke three reviews that are completely illegitimate, that, that are break all the guidelines. And so yeah. unfortunately it's just a necessity. Where do you see the future of SEO going? You know, I mean, if you were, you had a crystal ball, where, where would you, you know, with everything that we talked about? I mean, if you look at it just as a channel, right? Facebook, yeah. Instagram, just to think of it as a channel, they have to have user created content. And, but look at every single channel, what's happened. Once they get enough content on the platform, organic visibility decreases and it's more pay to play. So I think that that's why Google ads has increased in value, but it also there's this, this whole game of attention arbitrage, right? It's in supply and demand. So it's going to continue to change algorithm to algorithm. And if they start to lose visibility and market share to being I guarantee they're going to start increasing more organic search. Is there a decline in the overall search volume from Google because of ChatGPT? Have you, have you, no? No, the search volumes continue to increase. A couple final words here. Focus more on the creative and the content that you're putting out. I know that you've heard that before as the content is king thing, but uh, now you got to be more cognizant of how you're different, your unique selling propositions, how you become more memorable with the saturation. So that's a big tip is, is really focus on the creative, and I use that term loosely, that could mean the copywriting, all, all sorts of things in terms of being memorable. How you can find me, if you're an attorney that wants help with marketing, you can go to rankings.io, or if you want to connect with me directly, you can go to LinkedIn and, and just do a search for Chris Dreyer. It's great to have you on the on the call here because you have such a, a breadth of knowledge based on all the podcasts that you do. And that's why it's so important, I think, to do this kind of outreach as a business owner to just stay at the tip of the spear. And I always, you know, think a little bit differently every time I talk to you. So thanks. And thanks for Let me know how I can help you. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ryan. You bet. Bye-bye.